I've been to South Lebanon just last week, and I've seen the magnitude of the Hezbollah terror tunnels firsthand. It's just unbelievable the amount of weapons and the infrastructure that they've set up only a few hundred meters from the Israeli border. And that's only one layer of Hezbollah in Lebanon. So they have the layer that is prepared to launch ground offensives and basically capture the northern part of Israel. Okay, and the IDF now took over, over control of this layer, basically of all the Hezbollah um, terror infrastructures, adjacent to the border with Israel. Okay, of course, there is a lot, work, a lot more work to be done to discover and to destroy these tunnels and to find the people and then, you know, capture them, interrogate them and understand how deep this network goes. But there is another layer of the long-range missiles, the drone facilities, the drone manufacturing compounds that are located in the northern part of Lebanon. And I think that uh, this... Uh, termination that you just mentioned of this key member of Hezbollah goes together with all the list of executions that the IDF carried out in order to basically take off the battlefield the key personnel that are in charge of leading these strategic attacks that can really harm either Israeli military bases, I don't know, facilities, strategic facilities within Israel, if it's an economic facility, if it's ports, if it's, uh, if it's uh, civilian populations in key cities of Israel. And we see that the IDF is becoming more and more uh, brave and more and more extreme in its operations. So only a few days ago, we had the commandos that uh, conducted uh, a jet ski boat operation north of Beirut to capture another commander of Hezbollah. And only yesterday it was clear for publication that Israeli commandos carried out an operation against key Iranian officials in Syria. Okay, so the IDF is reaching all these key personnel and terror figures all across uh, the Middle East. Doesn't matter if it's just on the border, if, even if they are hiding either in, we've seen it either in Tehran or in Syria, or in Lebanon, in the north, in the middle, in the south, uh, the IDF is uh, reaching out to get them. And I think that the um, strategy is working. Of course, that it will take a long time, I think at least a few more months, until we can completely annihilate Hezbollah. And the only, only way we can do this is if we have support, first of all, from the international community to keep going, and also to create some kind of diplomatic pressure on Lebanon to stop, uh, stop Hezbollah from regrouping and controlling this country. And then second of all, in order for this to be a success, Lebanon and the Lebanese military should be reinforced, should be more active in taking back their country. And I think that's the only way that there can be an end to this conflict between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, we've been seeing that our challenge as Israel is the... <coughs> unmanned drones. So the Iron Dome anti-rocket defense system, the Arrow 3, Arrow 2, and David Sling are very efficient in neutralizing any kind of threat that comes from the air, if it's uh, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and even short-range missiles that are just dumb, like what we've seen from the Gaza Strip, that they just fire a pipe uh, with uh, explosives towards us. But the challenge is the drones, because they're flying very slow and very low, which makes them also in, almost invisible to our radars. And that's why this is the major weapon that uh, Hezbollah is still able to inflict damage to Israel. Okay? Of course, it, even the rockets and all these mortars and whatever they fired us, anti-tank missiles, they cause a lot of damage. But... <clears throat> The IDF is not intercepting all of them, only those that are about to hit a residential area, a military base, or something that will cause human life damage. But uh, the North is under constant fire. The communities are destroyed from one year of war with Hezbollah. There is damage, and sadly, nobody's talking about it because unless there's, I mean, uh, a life toll 
Nobody cares. Hamas basically turned into this guerrilla organization. After one year of fighting with the IDF, Hamas is diminished into this guerrilla organization that is still causing damage, but is not uh, acting in any kind of organized manner. So we have a few guerrilla cells in different areas that are reinforced by gangs and by 16-year-olds and other uh, people that just want to join the battle against the IDF. I mean, if it's ideologically or just because they want food and money to survive, this is the two, the two reasons. But that's how Hamas maintains its ability to keep carrying out attacks against the IDF. So the IDF's operations and objectives in the Gaza Strip now is to maintain presence in the Philadelphia Corridor, which is the border between Sinai, which is part of Egypt, and the Gaza Strip. Okay, so to prevent Hamas from getting more weapons, more supplies into the Gaza Strip. That's one. Second thing is to maintain presence in the Netzer Corridor, which separates the northern part of Gaza from the southern part of Gaza. This is the two main objectives, and it's all according to the IDF's plan from the get-go of this operation. And still, it's important to remind everybody that we have hostages that are kept in the Gaza Strip. And until these hostages get home, the IDF will have to remain in full capacity in the Gaza Strip. The major effect of this operation, first of all, is taking out this key person from the battlefield. It will harm the ability of Iran to carry out coordinated attacks that will include Syria. Okay, Syria is basically the Wild West. Since the, civil, the Syrian civil war, nobody is really governing Syria. So Iran has a strong presence in Syria and is using um, militias that are funded by Iran to carry out uh, either smuggling operations, uh, trafficking routes of weapons, to deliver ammunition to Lebanon. The IDF has been striking these ammunition for a very long time, and now the Iranians are trying to create facilities that will develop weapons <coughs> in Syria and then launch them towards Israel from yet another front. Okay? So taking off this person from the battlefield is a clear signal to Iran that we will not uh, accept being attacked by any more proxies and will not let you build another uh, part of your proxy group in the region, basically enlarging the ring of fire of Iran around Israel. So this is the, the key message that Israel is sending. And moreover, to talk about the operation, this wasn't like a James Bond style movie operation because Israeli commandos under um, specific intelligence that was gathered by the Israeli intelligence agencies and of course the Mossad and, and other assets on the ground and in Israel were able to infiltrate this foreign country, uh, do their mission, come out without being detected and it's a, and it's a complete uh, success and another proof of the capabilities of the IDF and uh, the Israeli security agencies. So I think it's another boost to the Israeli morale, to our capabilities in this region. And I think that basically after the pager attacks and the preemptive strike against um, Hezbollah's missile launchers that happened, I think, a while back already, Israel has been showing successes after successes in the realm of intelligence, of covert operations, and in general, uh, reaching strategic achievements in this war. Iran is planning an attack. The leaders of Iran with Ayatollah Ali Khamenei um, stated also in Hebrew that he will carry out an attack, but it's not clear how, from where, and the going assumption now is that it will be a coordinated attack that will involve more sophisticated long-range missile that will have a larger uh, warhead, meaning a larger bomb at the, at the tip of them. And this attack will be coordinated from a few fronts at the same time. Okay, this goes together with your previous question about the importance of eliminating the Iranian key figure in Syria. So 
The assumption now is that Iran will carry out a multi-front uh, wave of attack from Iraq, in, in which they have Iranian militias and strong presence uh, of the IRGC there, and from Iran itself at the same time. But they don't want to do this before the American elections because they don't want to affect the outcome of the elections. According to Iranian uh, officials that I personally interviewed that monitor the Iranian media and uh, the IRGC at large, Iran is very keen on uh, having Kamila Harris as the next president of the United States. So they don't want to somehow affect and give Trump more, more voters. And they think that an attack against Islam might do that now. So they're waiting until after the U.S. elections. And um, in terms of Israel, okay, Israel stopped already two attacks from Iran. And um, we're ready to stop more missiles if they come. Personally, me and my family will be ready to go to the bomb shelter if needed. I mean, the kids are all prepared to do that. We've been doing that for, for a year now. And, uh, you know, I'm Israel Chai, the people of Israel is strong. And uh, I believe that uh, God is protecting us and we'll face whatever is coming next to us. At this time, and this is something I really hope that we'll have the support of the United States. And we see that uh, the U.S. military brought more uh, B-52 bombers into the region to try to, I mean, persuade Iran not to carry out this attack. So I hope that this time the response will be even harsher. And now, after the former Israeli airstrike proved that Israel can reach anywhere they want in Iran and uh, actually destroyed their S-300 anti-aircraft uh, batteries, they have less defensive capabilities against an Israeli retaliation. So I think they have a lot more to lose than us. We've proven that we can defend ourselves against any kind of missile so far. And um, we've also proven that we can attack and strike their military bases, their anti-rocket systems, and we can also strike their oil refineries and their nuclear capabilities as long as we get the backing from the international community. So I think they have a lot more to lose than what Israel has to lose in this situation. And I think that the only way to dismantle Iran and is from within so that the Iranian people will finally get rid of this uh, Ayatollah regime that is uh, holding them and uh, basically bankrupting the entire population of Iran to carry out these operations, these terror attacks against Israel for no, no reason, basically.